guys, so here's the movie review for A Nightmare on Elm Street 3, Dream Warriors, 1987. A Nightmare on Elm Street 3, Dream Warriors tells the story of the last remaining Elm Street children. They're all kept in this mental hospital and they have to band together, find their inner strengths, cover the power of the Dream Warriors that gives them, and take down Freddy Cooker once for all. But despite its financial success, a lukewarm response by fans and critics alike of Freddy's Revenge made a new line to bring Wes Craven back. We gotta get him back, we gotta get his ideas, his writing in here so we can do the proper sequel to A Nightmare on Street. But Wes Craven did stick around to direct this. He wrote the first draft of this and they brought Frank Darabont. That's right, the director of Sean Shake Redemption has his hands on A Nightmare on Elm Street 3. Dream warriors as well as chuck russell's to punch up his script come up with something a bit different and chuck russell actually stayed on to handle directing duties of dream warriors now going back to wes craven's first draft of this movie it was very dark it was very brutal it was no hards bar it was very profane with a lot of freddy's dialogue and you can tell that chuck russell and frank darabont came in and they really added those fantastical fun elements that we came to know from the later sequels and the Nightmare on Elm Street franchise. And that element of Nightmare on Elm Street that was never done better before than Dream Warriors. The balancing of the funny Freddy and the scary Freddy. Absolutely perfect in this one. And of course, most of the credit of that is going to go to Robert England and his portrayal of Freddy Krueger. A lot of the dialogue and the one-liners that we know and love from Dream Warriors was actually ad-libbed by Robert England. My favorite one and always will be this one right here. The stars really align with Robert England in this one. He's still sinister and still scary like we knew him from the original and even pieces from Freddy's Revenge but all of his one-liners, all of his humor, all of his jokes and personality he injects into Freddy with Dream Warriors nails it. There's not a single line that Freddy delivers in this movie that falls flat. It all lands. I, I really wish this would have carried through the further sequels because the totally got out of hand. But Dream Warriors did it the best. And back from the original Nightmare on Elm Street cast is Heather Lane Kemp as our favorite Nancy Thompson and her father played by John Saxon. And this film utilized those two characters beautifully. There's not a sequel that I can think of, not even horror sequels, just sequels in general. It pays so much love and respect to the original, brings back characters that we love from the original, utilizes them that well, and wraps up their story. Nancy's still that bad to the bone fighter that we all fell in love with. She's amped up so much in Dream Wars, she is now a protector. She finds these kids in this mental hospital that nobody will listen to, nobody will help, nobody will entertain and that she wants to protect them because she used to be them she used to be the one telling them about this evil telling them about this man and nobody would believe her especially her mother and father she wants to prevent what happened to her in the original film happening to them and that was just a perfect way to grow her character from where she was in the first nightmare on street film i really like what they did with john saxon's characters as well because you didn't get too much of him in the first movie it was basically there just to be just a kind of the police force. It's more of the working man because they're terrible parents. They had nothing to do with their daughter. I no idea what she was going through. We don't listen to her. In this film, you can see where the relationship has taken its toe on him over time. Still estranged from his daughter. He looks like he's pretty much lost everything that he worked so hard for as far as his career. He's getting into alcoholism himself, but he gets a chance for redemption in this to make up for all the mistakes that he made in the first movie and even the story that we never got to see before from the first film. He used to help take down Freddy as well. What a great way to bring his character back. Otherwise, it would have been a Glory 5 cameo, but they utilize it so well. His present is welcome. As far as our new characters that we're following in Dream Warriors, all the Elm Street children, the victims if you will, everybody in Dream Warriors was written. Oh well, has such unique and distinctive personalities and they're so likable. Even though I really want to see the kills, how brutal it's going to be. Whenever they do meet their end, I actually care for these kids. And I want them to make it through it. Invested in their fight against Freddy. 
That's really important in a slasher film. Because if you don't care about the victims, if you're not following the story or the characters at all, then you're just watching cannon fodder on screen. But you're really invested in their characters, their stories, their fight, their struggles, their dynamics with each other, and they absolutely did perfectly whenever they casted these kids and wrote the script. Tisha Arquette made her feature film debut in A Nightmare on Elm Street 3 Dream Warriors. And she plays Kristen, and she's kind of the main character as far as the new Elm Street characters. Obi opens up with her, and the most part, follow her more throughout the story than the other kids. What I love about her character is that she's really cool. Compliment to Nancy. When Nancy and her meet, they have a great dynamic back and forth. Because Kristen, just like Nancy, has a mother that does not believe them. I don't give her too much of attention or care for her. I love the way that Nancy steps in like this surrogate mother to her and is protector for Christian. And Kristen, and she's really a strong character as well. Got a great little dream power where bring in anybody that she needs. Even though she's scared of Freddy, you never get the sense that she's this helpless victim. You feel like she's like the one who's going to fight against Freddy. And she's going to use every bit of strength that she has to survive. In this situation, possibly even take down Freddy in the end. Just like you got from Nancy in the original. And it was great that they found a way to bring a character like that back without feeling like a stock copy of a character that we all know and love. Kincaid is the man because this guy realized that no adult cares, no adult believes him, no adult's gonna help him, and he uses this to avenge his character. And he basically says, okay, screw all of y'all. I'm gonna help myself. None of you are going to put your hands on me. And this guy's got some of the best lines in this whole film. He's one of the most memorable characters from the franchise. The other character I want to come and touch on a little bit, it's Joey. Joey cracks me up because he's pretty much the epitome of all young males. His entire weakness in this film is women. Not Freddy. Not the Nightmare. Not the Blade. Nothing like that. It's just a gorgeous looking woman. And it doesn't matter what situation he's in. His attention will be diverted 110% and you start talking about a good horror sequel or a really good sequel in general you want it to pay respect to the original you want it to take the story a little bit further add some mythology add some depth to the characters even the killer or the villain you want all these things to be expanded to be bigger and grander and uh, Nightmare on Elm Street 3 Dream Warriors does all of that in fact one of the best things about this film is the writing itself Wes Craven Frank Darabont and Chuck Russell really outdid themselves with the script and story ideas that they executed in Dream Warriors. Not only setting this into a mental health hospital, a good way to change up the settings and change up the feel from the other films, it gives it its own kind of flavor, but also with the writing, with the dialogue, writing of these characters. But writing the backstory of Freddy and the introduction of Amanda Krueger is a huge integral part of the lore and the story of Freddy Krueger that started in this film. We never got this in, in the two previous films. We never saw Amanda Krueger or heard her name before until this film. We never really got a backstory for Freddy either, aside from the fact he was a child molester, a child murderer that met his maker by the parents. But this gives you even deeper and sicker origin for Freddy. You got Amanda Krueger, who is this is this nun. She worked in a, this mental hospital with all these maniacs. She accidentally get locked in this room with these maniacs where they continually brutalize her and unfortunately rapes her for weeks and months until she's finally rescued. And they fi find her with child Freddy Cougar. What a wicked way to write the origin for Freddy Cougar. I mean the sick and twistedness of the entire situation and another new character that they introduced, Dr. Neil Gordon, that's played by Greg Busan. Now, this character is very interesting. I think in the entire franchise, this is the only adult that, even before he has his initial interaction with Freddy, he really wants to help these kids. That's the only person, the only adult in this entire franchise that does it. He wants what's best for his kids, even if there are delusions out of this world and so unbelievable 
He wants to help them. He believes them. He believes that they believe it. I really like that aspect of his character. He's got a great back and forth with Nancy, and I like the fact that he's one of the accomplices in the end of taking down Freddy Krueger. It's a great story arc with him, and I also like his scenes with Amanda Krueger because that whole thing and whole revolution is one of my favorite aspects of the story. He's a, such a great character that I wish he showed up in the beginning of Dream and Masters. Just to see that character one more time with the way that they wrote this film was the dream powers and the way that they really compliment the kids figure with how Freddy takes them on and how they take on Freddy himself. A lot of great one-on-one -on -one scenes. Whenever they're finally in the third act and they're each meeting Freddy one-on-one -on -one, and every time they have a certain fear, they have a certain personality trait about them. That can be considered as a weakness in the real world and it's amplified into a strength in the dream world. For instance, you got Kristen who is really alone. She feels isolated, feels like nobody's on her side. So when she's in the dream world, she can bring anybody into it that she wants. Into her dream to help her and to be with her and stand alongside her. Kincaid feels like he's not allowed to be as, as strong as he is. He's not allowed to really help everybody the way he can be because everybody's trying to lock him up and shut him up in the dream world, Hulk. And then you have Philip. He's kind of the stereotypical geek. He likes all these board games, and he's got the glasses, got the signature look to him. And in the dream world, he used to be the wizard master. Maybe that one's a little silly. Karen is this kind of weak, regretful, extra addict. In the dream world, she gets to be this bad to the bone metal chick. And then you have Joey, and okay, his weakness in the real world is women. In the dream world, his powers is that he can speak, so I guess he can. How nice the women are. And one more element that Freddy Krueger lore that actually started in Dream Wars that I've always been a big fan of, the look of it, is the souls of the children that he killed that were kind of encased into his body. What a wild practical effect that was. And that the practical effects in Dream War is awesome. Yeah, let's talk about the kills, man. I think this one has the best kills in all of the Nightmare films. I'm sorry, this is my favorite Nightmare Elm Street. And the kills are the best ones. I mean, you got the first kill that is basically the Puppet Master type of deal. That one kid. And you got my favorite kill of the whole movie. Welcome to prime time. You know what? <laughs> uh, the souls uh, were pretty awesome, too. The big worm, practical effects. This is pretty awesome too. The hypodermic needles, which I got that Funko of Freddy. And I can't forget the wheelchair was really scary when I was a kid <laughs> when I watched this. I think uh, rewatching this, I remember that chair. <laughs> and let's talk about how great the ending was written. Not only it is the best defeat of Freddy Krueger that has been written in this entire franchise, but it utilized Nancy and John Saxon so well. Hey, Nancy a chance at revenge gave John Saxon the chance for redemption and all of that came together so awesome just the way they have to find Freddy's remains they use a cross and holy water while they're trying to fight him in the dream world how all that came together it's just an awesome third act one of the best ways I've seen a horror icon taken out in a film and one more thing I have to mention and I'm talking about a Nightmare Elm Street 3 Dream Warriors of course I'm gonna have to mention Dawkins I love the crap out of that music video and theme song from Dawkins. The Dream Warriors song. It's got a killer solo. It's got 80s awesomeness to it. You got John Dawkins. You got George Lynch on guitar. And it's really amazing. And here's a cool fun fact about this. Dawkins was actually the first band to really dive into something of that extent. Where they write a song. They record it. They do a music video. They tie in the actors from scenes of the movie, that he all this promotional art, just in the entire way they wrote that song and marketed it alongside with the movie. It's iconic, it's synonymous with this film. I can't think of this movie without the song. Especially when the film ends, when they utilize the song, you get the ending scene and the credit rolls, and then you get the first couple of notes of the song and it gives chills every time. Here you go guys. I hope you like, like this movie review. Please like it. Please subscribe. Check out Twitter page and have an awesome day guys.